Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about an EVA comprehensive guide, your one-stop shop to essentially be EVA throughout the BSF and the BRO season. If you guys need any coaching, feel free to hit me up on Metafy. My link is in the description below. Feel free to book a session and we can get started. This guide will explain everything that you need to know about EVA. Starting off, let's just say if you are a new EVA player, this is the guide for you, telling you all the uh, deck choices that I make as well as budget options. I think that is a really important thing knowing that EVA has a lot of expensive promos. So this is definitely the guide for you. Also looking through some lines of play as well as meta matchups. This is probably one of the most um, popular decks in the meta at the moment and will definitely be something that you will see at the Bushiro Spring Fest. So let's get started. So starting off with this deck build, we are running the EVA ride line, very self-explanatory. This ride line allows you to search your orders to get the minimum requirement three once you get to grade three. Then next we're gonna talk about the grade threes that we run. The first one, very important, and it came in the Minerva Rising set, which is four of the world, is a blue research lab order. This is one of the best orders, if not the best order for EVA. Essentially it allows you to on place top five core one, trading this card for essentially any card that you find in the top five. This Research order also allows you to solve plus one, rest three of your research cards in the order zone to give one of your glitter units plus 5k, which means that you can pump the EVA grade three or alternatively the Obscadades as well. This research, very much needed. Obviously that there are other choices for researchers as well, but yeah, this is definitely a staple in your deck. And it's double rare, so very easy to find. The next is three EVA herself, Persona Ride is always good, you can also run the Chalice if you like, but the good thing about this deck is that it's not very reliant on Persona Ride, so you don't actually need Persona Rides as often because you can stabilize just on 4 attacks and beefy rearguards. But you know, if Persona Ride does come up, Persona Ride is Persona Ride and it's always good. Next, your Obscadade, your Grade 3 Obscadade, a free 10k intercept a 23k beater if you call this off an effect such as your EVA on attack or your blue grade 3 research order, it gains a crit. This card is super insane, makes this deck super tanky, so essentially you have two intercepts in the front row and then intercept them off and there's nothing your opponent can really do about it. With the grade 1 order that I'll explain a little bit later, this card has protection which means that People can't retire this, but in the meta at the moment that's not very relevant because pretty much everything bypasses it. Uh, if you're in the mirror, the grade 2 obscure attacks into this, and then if you're playing against Chronojet, then it bottom decks this. So nothing actually actively retires, which is kind of annoying, but at least, you know, this card is protected under the grade 1 promo order, which I'll explain a little bit later. So the last grade 3 that we're running is Robust. So 4 Abent Robust allows you to search for an order that is currently in your order zone and it makes as a 23k beat stick. The best thing about this is that you can find your orders out of your deck which means that you thin your deck. This deck previously without Robust actually thins heaps and the best thing about this deck is that you can get to a stage where you essentially have just triggers in your deck and then you just trigger your opponent into, into oblivion, essentially. Robust also combos well with the grade 1 order because it allows you to essentially salvage a 10k shield into your hand as long as you have a grade 1 research order in the order zone. So pairing this with the Grey One Order allows you to trade off a what would normally be a dead card in hand, which is a set order, for a card that essentially you can place. So either place, meaning off the blue order, or the promo order, which uh, allows you to fetch for a 10k shield. And yeah, that's just so good. So that's four robust. And then the only Grey Twos that you're running is the Obscadet. Again, a 10k shield, a 15k attacker, if you call this off an effect, such as your uh, Grade 3 EVA or the Blue Order, it allows you to attack the front row uh, in one battle. Something like a Vermillion, this card is actually really good in the mirror because, you know, 
In the mirror, your opponent will have multiple obscadades in the front row. Because you don't have a way to actively get rid of them, attacking into them essentially means that they can't use them to intercept. And if they can't use them to intercept and you're attacking into them, then, you know, if they want to keep them, they're going to be fessing up a lot. This is also good because you can search it off the Grade 1 Order. Uh, grade 1 Order can put itself into Soul uh, and then Salvage and Obscadade, which is the next card that we're going to talk about. So this order, result of the experiment henceforth, when you place it in the uh, order zone, it does nothing. But later on, it trades itself back into your hand uh, for a 10k shield. Best utility card, this is expensive because of just what it does for the deck. Allows you to counter charge, produce to the soul because this goes into soul, and you essentially get a free 10k shield out of it. Very, very strong order and, you know, can justify the price um, of this promo order. The next is PG's. Uh, you can run whatever. Uh, I don't have the Brankgate one, but if I did, then I would. Uh, you can also run Elementaria, but I'm just putting it here as, I guess, like an indication that the PG slot doesn't matter too much. If you have the Violate Dragon, run three with one em Elementaria, otherwise, yeah, feel free to run whichever PGs you like. And then the last grade one slot is Wavy Loss. Wavy Loss is an okay card. It allows you to Soul Blast 2 to draw a card. It's a 13k beat stick and a booster. So early game you can like commit this down and not feel bad. But this is probably the one replaceable card um, in the deck itself. Once we get the promo, which is the grade 2 on boost, which allows you to search for an order in top 5 or top 7, this is probably going to go out or robust goes out, but I think this slot isn't as necessary. So that's 3 wavy loss. Going to triggers, the best over trigger in the game, Elder Breath, nothing more to say there. So this deck runs 3 fronts and then 8 crits. The 8 crits you can use the Intersoul crit or the 5k crit, whichever one, it doesn't really matter too much. And then 4 heals as well. So looking at this deck, it's pretty self-explanatory what it does. The orders are like probably the most crucial in this deck. If you don't have that order, then you know, you can substitute it for other things, which I'm going to explain now. So some budget options that you can consider for the deck is the older order. I know that this is actually high in price, so you either pay for this or you're paying for this, and if you have to pay for one of the two, you might as well pay for the grade one. This card is, I guess, slightly easy to find, but now that, you know, this particular promo pack is in circulation, you might actually find that, you know, you you can see this more often. But if you ever need to play this research order, then there are other things that you also need um, to replace as well as essentially synergize well with this research order. So you can re replace this for the grade one order. So four copies of this for the four research order. But that would mean that these three would need to be the goblin, which is called secondal. Why does it have to be secondal? It's because you need a way to recycle your obscadades. Naturally drawing into your obscadades as well as you know, calling them out of this, calling them out of this, you're gonna run out of obscadades. Which means that you need a way to return your obscadades back to deck so that you fully maximize the uh, EVA on attack, which means that the three slots here for secondal is perfect for that. So if you're running the grade two order, make sure you pair it with secondal, taking out the grade one order and the wavy loss. Other options that you could probably consider for this deck is Combine Rusher. This used to be a card that ran before the Blue Order came out as well as before Robust came out. It's an early game card which allows you to ditch itself and then revive it for early aggression. I think this card is quite outdated in the EVA build itself only because you can just commit the Obscadade if you draw it or the Wavy Loss and you feel pretty good. But if you feel that you need more Grade 2s, feel free to swap out some of the Robust for this. It does the job. So that's that. 
There are other things that you can probably run as well. If you can't seem to find robusts in a way, you could also run this penguin, so aiding monster Tactian. This card allows you to search your top five for a set order and add it to hand. If you miss with this, don't feel bad. You can, I guess, run more orders, but I think the more orders that you run, the clunkier the deck becomes. Eight's a pretty nice number and you're able to search it off Tactian if you ever need it. The good thing about this is that you can just drop this like as an attacker early game into the front row, start attacking with it, and it's like a 10k, which means that you don't have to wait till grade three to find your orders. So if you're replacing Robust for Tactian, that is, I guess, a play that you can do as well. Moving on, like I said before, you can swap um, PGs for like the monster PG if you're on a budget. The other three Violate Dragons, or the other two Violate Dragons, uh, are in uh, my other deck. I, I don't even think this is Violate Dragon, this is uh, one of the new ones. Um, you can also swap one of the PGs for Elementaria, which is completely fine. You can also play the draws over the fronts. I like the fronts better because it puts more aggression on this deck, as well as this deck serves more quality of shield rather than quantity of shield. Each of your grade 3s and your grade 2 is essentially a 10k shield. Robust turns a grade 1 order PG, I mean, yeah, grade 1 order into an obscure, which is 10k shield. Uh, this filters out deck, so pretty much all your drawing essentially are actually triggers, triggers all your PGs. Which means that I find that the 20k shield on this is way more valuable, and if you hit a front, um, Offensively, it might actually just win you the game. Uh, the crits, sometimes you need the intersoul crit for resource purposes, especially if you're not running the grade one order. I feel that sometimes you do run out of soul, but very, very, very unlikely that ever comes up. I think just having it in the deck is better than not having it, because then at least the option there, uh, what is there for you. So that's pretty much the talks on the, I guess, budget side of things. Um, obviously this is very expensive and providing an alternative, which is running the grade two order, um, I guess is a, another way of, you know, building the stack. Uh, I mentioned also before that when the new PR comes out, uh, I don't actually know the name of it, but uh, the Soul Blast search top five or top seven for an order, you would be taking out the robusts purely because it allows you to search for an order as well as you can rush with the early game, which is very crucial in this uh, metagame at the moment because you're playing against Chronojet. And yeah, that's pretty much it for budget options and I guess the deck build. So let's talk about Mulligan. It's pretty simple. I'll give you a very short description. Essentially what you need to keep is one of these two orders. Why is that? Because the grade one order there is the condition for you to only use its effect when you have four or more research orders. So if you miss out on turn three putting an order, then you know going forward from there, it's gonna get a little bit tight, a little bit hard for you to maneuver, especially if you don't have access to the counter charging skill of this grade one. Alternatively, you know, you can search using this, which means that you can trade this for any card yeah, you know, in your deck. So if you get multiple of these, you don't feel too bad. There are, you know, slight other cards that you could probably keep, which is like the Robust. You can keep the Robust if you like, which means that when you play this on turn three, you pop the Robust out, and then you get the fourth order, which can fulfill the uh, grade one skill uh, on turn four. Otherwise, everything else is kind of whatever. Uh, because obviously your obscures you want to keep them in deck. If you're versing against a Chronojet, definitely keep a grade two obscure and a wavy loss because you want to rush them early and putting on the pressure early means that you know they have less hand to deal with your turn. So if you're versing Chronojet, uh, keep one of the two or even both, and then obviously one of the orders as well. I think. Keeping it within these three is perfect, um, as long as you have one of the orders and then uh, a rush piece earlier on. The Robust isn't very uh, crucial, but it, it's really good if you have it on turn three, you just place down search for an order and then you've locked in the four orders within your first four turns. 
So that's the mulligan for it. Uh, there's an, it's pretty simple, very self-explanatory, nothing uh, too crazy about the mulligan. The turn all your triggers, obviously. And, oh yeah, you can also keep the Sonar Ride if you really want to. But the problem with uh, keeping the Sonar Ride is that you're actually keeping a bunch of like dead cards. So like if you're keeping, you know, Robust and like an Order, and then you're keeping a an Eva, that's three cards that you can't use to guard until turn three and turn four. So that's like one of the things that you need to worry about. Also, I think it's more beneficial for you to keep the grade three order in hand uh, over the grade one because your ride line can search the grade one and you never really want to show the information of this to your opponent from hand. If you keep this in the early game uh, in your hand after mulligan, then you want to search the grade one orders off the ride line. All right, now jumping into some plays. When you are on the grade three Vanguard, then obviously you want to be playing your robust. Let's just say, you know, I had a few open CB here. You know, you got, I got rushed or whatever. Then you want to play the robust. Robust, you should play it on obviously any rigger, but essentially this card is going to be replaced with your obscurate the moment when your Eva attacks. So you can come off one and then search your deck for I guess an order that you have in the order zone. Particularly, you want to search for your core order, which means that you can use it on the next turn. Let's just say if you had, you know, wavy loss, then you want to keep this on the side so that you make sure one of your attacks are hitting, and then depending on like essentially what you call from this as well. Let's just say you called one of the obscurate. So the question would be, which side do I play it on? And the answer is, it depends. So it depends because of your opponent's board formation, which means that if you are looking to attack with the uh, Obscadate first because you want to get rid of rearguards, then you obviously want to keep the Obscadate alone, uh, attack the front row, and then attack solo with the Robust, and then the Eva, Kalos 1, Solos 1, we'll call this over this, which means that the last attack is actually biggest because it's... 23 plus 13 so 36 and then obviously any added triggers after that but let's just say you know you are later in the game and you have like something like this then you still want to keep the uh, re replaceable card in front of a booster because after the replaceable card then you know you get rid of it and then call i don't know one of your obscurates or whatever the case may be you can call your grade 3 obscurate and then attack attack again. The one problem that I find sometimes is that this card, you want to replace it, but it's a little bit awkward with like the positioning of your units, depending if you like commit to an early game. So for example, let's just say if it was something like this, right? In this case, let's just say Obscadade was called just normally uh, w without any effects. So you'd attack 15 first and then attack this and then get rid of that and then call something over that, which is like the Obscadade grade three. So that means that to be honest, you'd attack with this first, attack with the second and then play the Obscadade over um, after you attack with your Eva. So that's like another line of play, but essentially the the most important rule is that you keep the replaceable card on the side of the booster given that the other side can hit and usually if it's an obscurate it will hit it will hit 15 but sometimes it depends on your attack pattern as well so that's pretty much the bare basics um i guess the only other thing to talk about is like what to ditch in the ride line so let's just say you know you're riding up into grade one what do you ditch first of all you ditch unguardable cards unless you need the third order or the fourth order uh, robust is okay but essentially you need early shield right so what do you search off this you search one of your two orders mainly the grade one only because you can actually search your uh, units off the grade three but it's also that the grade one can only be placed on turn one. So if you're riding up to grade one, the first thing that you do is like you search different deck and then you place it straight away. 
Riding up to grade two, then you have the option. So let's just say you're playing the grade two order, then you can find the grade two order. Otherwise, if you're playing just four, four of the three in the grade one, then you search for this and you place it again. Which means that you don't actually search for this order. So that means that the priority on keeping this order in hand is actually pretty big. The moment when you ride to grade three, then you want to play this order top five core one and then play the line of formation that I just showed you just now. Now talking about EVA and the metagame, I think EVA is one of the best decks at the moment. The deck is super strong, has everything, super tanky. Um, each, each of your rear guards are like 10k shield, so you know each of your obscadades. Uh, intercept for 10, intercept for 10, really really good. It has you know front row attack to get rid of any uh, pesky intercepts. This guy also gets inherent crit, crit, which makes it super hard for your opponent to guard. And the deck just itself, it just scales really, really well. You know, after you start using a bunch of these, you like uh, deck filter, you use robust, you filter as well, wavy loss draws into whatever. And yeah, the, the deck itself is like super strong. Eva itself, you top five or top X to search for a card and put into hand. The deck allows you to essentially get free PGs if you see PGs at the top deck. Um, if you need triggers and guard value, then you can grab that as well. Or if you need, you know, playable units, then you can call, uh, grab that as well. So the longer the game goes, the better this deck becomes because it scales. It scales with the amount of triggers left in deck as well as uh, just all your rear guards being massive, right? This is 23 base, 15 base, Persona Ride 25, 33. Just really, really strong numbers. So how do you beat this? It's very simple. You just aggro them early game. This deck is actually really fragile come or well, before grade three because essentially the only attackable unit that they have is uh, the Obscadet grade two or the Wavy Loss. And if they don't see these, then yeah, their turn is pretty weak. And also, if you like play this on turn one, then you miss out on the Soul Blast two draw one. Um, but that doesn't really matter too much. But the fact that you can just swing for eight and swing for eight, then that's good. But otherwise, like the rare occasions where you know you you're running three wave of loss so you might not actually see this card but yeah the moment when you ride to grade two then cool you have access to your obscadades but that's like a loss of 10k shield later on um but at least you can still attack for 10 and 10 but in comparison to other decks you don't actually have that many grade twos so your offense actually starts the moment when you get to grade three you start doing all your shenanigans and then start calling so how you beat this deck Pretty self-explanatory, just rush them early, uh, conserve hand obviously, get through their big turns, guard properly, but the most weakest part of this deck is the early game. Now looking into like how this deck goes into other decks, this deck actually does really well into uh, Chrono Jet because Eva can search the Elementaria in the top X, depending on how many you know, orders you have in the order zone, but also it, it's just big, you know? Uh, you chain Persona Rides, and then you essentially get up like big numbers, right? So you Persona Ride, your front row is like automatically 25, 33 with boosters as well. This is a 28 after you use its skill. Like the numbers are actually stable, consistent four attack deck, um, which sometimes can just win you against, you know, Chrono Jet. But Chrono Jet, is more like, you know, you play early. So you, like I told you before, keeping this wavy loss in hand for the early game, you just place this down and start bashing two lines. Um, other than that, like, yeah, that's pretty much Eva in a nutshell. The deck itself doesn't really play around much. Um, it just does what it does and it does it well, which, you know, if you're a beginner and picking up this deck, it's a pretty good deck to pick up. Um, you can learn little micro decisions here and there um, and just making sure that you are, you know, getting the most advantage out of your grade threes, obviously your orders as well, deck thinning, and then getting to a position where you, all you show are, you know, yellow stars and then you just send your opponent uh, into the next round. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the EVA profile. This is a pretty short one, only because EVA itself is very self-explanatory. There's not really much, you know, hiding from this deck. Uh, I think the deck has been pretty solved for a while now and everyone knows that this deck is very, very strong. 
Um, obviously, another contender is Chronojet. Chronojet is just super strong in all fields, you know, early game rush. And early game rush really hurts this deck. So Chronojet is like the boogeyman against this deck, but otherwise this deck can just like scale out of the game. Like pretty much against any other deck in the format. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Thank you very much guys for watching. If you guys liked this video, pop a like, comment down below what you guys think of this video. Are there any other deck guys that you guys would like to see? I know I released Minerva, Chronojet, and Youthberg, as well as an Overlord one. If there's any more, feel free to pop down in the comments um, any suggestions. And yeah, I'll take them into consideration. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.